A modern Celtic identity emerged in Western Europe following the identification of the native peoples of the Atlantic Fringe as Celts by Edward Lhuyd. In the 18th century, the Irish and ancient British languages were thus Celtic languages. The descendants of these languages were the Britonic and Gaelic languages. These peoples were therefore modern Celts. Attempts were made to link their distinctive cultures to those of the ancient Celtic peoples. The concept of modern Celtic identity evolved during the course of the 19th century into the Celtic revival. By the late 19th century it often took the form of ethnic nationalism, particularly within the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, where the Irish Home Rule movement resulted in the secession of the Irish Free State in 1922. There were also significant Welsh, Scottish and Breton nationalist movements, giving rise to the concept of Celtic nations. After World War II, the focus of the Celticity movement shifted to linguistic revival and protectionism, e.g., with the foundation of the Celtic League in 1961, dedicated to preserving the surviving Celtic languages. The Celtic revival also led to the emergence of musical and artistic styles identified as Celtic. Music typically drew on folk traditions within the Celtic nations. Art drew on decorative styles associated with the ancient Celts and with early medieval Celtic Christianity, along with folk styles. Cultural events to promote inter-Celtic cultural exchange also emerged. In the late 20th century a number of scholars criticized the idea of modern Celtic identity sometimes also arguing that there never was a common Celtic culture, even in ancient times. Malcolm Chapman's 1992 book The Celts, The Construction of a Myth led to what the archaeologist Barry Cunliffe has called if politically correct disdain for the use of Celt the extent to which a modern Celtic identity remains a useful concept continues to be debated. Definitions Traditionally, the essential defining criterion of Celticity is seen as peoples and countries that do, or once did, use Celtic languages and it is asserted that an index of connectedness to the Celtic languages has to be borne in mind before branching out into other cultural domains. Another approach to defining the Celts is the contemporary inclusive and associative definition used by Vincent and Ruth McGaw and Raymond Carl, that a Celt is someone who uses a Celtic language or produces or uses a distinctive Celtic cultural expression or has been referred to as a Celt in historical materials or has identified themselves or been identified by others as a Celt or has a demonstrated descent from the Celts. Since the Enlightenment, the term Celtic has been applied to a wide variety of peoples and cultural traits present and past. Today, Celtic is often used to describe people of the Celtic nations and their respective cultures and languages. Except for the Bretons, all groups mentioned have been subject to strong Anglicization since the early modern period and hence are also described as participating in an Anglo-Celtic macroculture. By the same token, the Bretons have been subject to strong Frenchification since the early modern period, and can similarly be described as participating in a Franco-Celtic macroculture. Less common is the assumption of Celticity for European cultures deriving from continental Celtic roots. These were either Romanized or Germanized much earlier, before the early Middle Ages. Nevertheless, Celtic origins are many times implied for continental groups such as the Asturians, Galicians, Portuguese, French, Swiss, Alpine Italians, Germans, Belgians or Austrians. The Latin name of the Swiss Confederacy, Confoderatia Helvetica, harks back to the Helvetii, the name of Galicia to the Galici and the Auvergne of France to the Averni. Celtic Revival and Romanticism Celt has been adopted as a label of self-identification by a variety of peoples at different times. Celticity can refer to the inferred links between them. During the 19th century, French nationalists gave a privileged significance to their descent from the Gauls. 
The struggles of Ersinghatorix were portrayed as a forerunner of the 19th century struggles in defense of French nationalism, including the wars of both Napoleons. Basic French history textbooks emphasize the ways in which Gauls could be seen as an example of cultural assimilation, however, the notion that French history textbooks commonly began with the famous words nos ancêtres les Gaulois is not supported in fact. A similar use of Celticity for 19th century nationalism was made in Switzerland, when the Swiss were seen to originate in the Celtic tribe of the Helvetii, a link still found in the official Latin name of Switzerland, Confoderatia Helvetica, the source of the nation code CH and the name used on postage stamps. Before the advance of Indo-European studies, philologists established that there was a relationship between the Goadelic and Brythonic languages, as well as a relationship between these languages and the extinct Celtic languages such as Gaulish, spoken in classical times. The terms Goadelic and Brythonic were first used to describe the two Celtic language families by Edward L. H. U. Y. D. in his 1707 Studion. According to the National Museum Wales, during that century, people who spoke Celtic languages were seen as Celts at the same time. There was also a tendency to play up alternative heritages in the British Isles at certain times. For example, in the Isle of Man, in the Victorian era, the Viking heritage was emphasized, and in Scotland, both Norse and Anglo-Saxon heritage was emphasized. A romantic image of the Celt as noble savage was cultivated by the early William Butler Yeats, Lady Gregory, Lady Charlotte Guest, Lady Clanover, James Macpherson, Chateaubriand, Theodore Hussit de la Villa Marquet and the many others influenced by them. This image colored not only the English perception of their neighbors on the so-called Celtic fringe, but also Irish nationalism and its analogues in the other Celtic-speaking countries. Among the enduring products of this resurgence of interest in a romantic, pre-industrial, brooding, mystical Celticity a gorse door, the revival of the Cornish language, and the revival of the Gaelic games, contemporary Celtic identity, the modern Celtic group's distinctiveness as national, as opposed to regional, minorities has been periodically recognized by major British newspapers. For example, a Guardian editorial in 1990 pointed to these differences and said that they should be constitutionally recognized. Smaller minorities also have equally proud visions of themselves as irreducibly Welsh, Irish, Manx or Cornish. These identities are distinctly national in ways which proud people from Yorkshire, much less proud people from Berkshire will never know. Any new constitutional settlement which ignores these factors will be built on uneven ground. The Republic of Ireland, on surpassing Britain's GDP per capita in the 1990s for the first time, was given the moniker Celtic Tiger. Thanks in part to campaigning on the part of Cornish regionalists, Cornwall was able to obtain Objective 1 funding from the European Union. Scotland and Wales obtained agencies like the Welsh Development Agency, and Scottish and Welsh nationalists have recently supported the institution of the Scottish Parliament and National Assembly for Wales. More broadly, distinct identities in opposition to that of the metropolitan capitals have been forged and taken strong root. These latter evolutions have proceeded hand in hand with the growth of a pan-Celtic or inter-Celtic dimension, seen in many organizations and festivals operating across various Celtic countries. Celtic studies departments at many universities in Europe and beyond have studied the various ancient and modern Celtic languages and associated history and folklore under one roof. Some of the most vibrant aspects of modern Celtic culture are music, song and festivals. Under the music, festivals and dance sections below, the richness of these aspects that have captured the world's attention are outlined. Sports such as hurling, Gaelic football and shinty are seen as being Celtic. The USA has also taken part in discussions of modern Celticity.
for example, Virginia Senator James H. Webb, in his 2004 book Born Fighting, How the Scots-Irish Shaped America, controversially asserts that the early, pioneering, immigrants to North America were of Scots-Irish origins. He goes on to argue that their distinct Celtic traits, in contrast to the Anglo-Saxon settlers, helped construct the modern American identity. Irish Americans also played an important role in the shaping of 19th century Irish republicanism through the Fenian movement and the development of view that the Great Hunger was a British atrocity. Criticism of modern Celticism In 1996, Dr. Ruth McGaw and Emeritus Professor Vincent McGaw of Flinders University in the Antiquity article Ancient Celts in Modern Ethnicity examined ethnic identity particularly in relation to Celtic identity in arguing against critics seemingly motivated by an English nationalist agenda opposed to further integration with Europe who saw modern Celtic identity as a threat. In 1998, Dr. Simon James of the University of Leicester in the Antiquity article, Celts, Politics and Motivation in Archaeology, replied to Ruth and Vincent Megieru's article questioning the suitability of the term Celtic in the historic sense. The core of his argument was that the Iron Age peoples of Britain should be considered not as generic Celts, but as a mosaic of different societies each with their own traditions and histories. Later in 1998, this line of reasoning came under criticism, being labelled an intellectual extension of modern British cultural colonialism, as well as for simplifying the anthropological correlation between material culture and ethnicity. Ruth and Vincent McGaw in the Antiquity article, The Mechanism of Dreams, a partial response to our critics, attacked Celt skeptics for being motivated by English nationalism or anxieties about the decline of British imperial power. Simon James, in 1998, wrote a response arguing that the rejection of a Celtic past was not nationalist, but partly due to archaeological evidence and usually by a post-colonial and multicultural agenda with recognition that Britain has always been home to multiple identities. However, on his web page, Simon James does say this of Ruth and Vincent Megaliru's book published in 1989, Celtic Heart from its beginnings to the Book of Kells. An excellent general work on the Latin art style, the name given to the largely abstract curvilinear art popularly known as Celtic. An answer to this seeming puzzle has now come with evidence uncovered in 2008 that the insular Celts were part of an Atlantic trading network. Culture speaking Celtic languages of the Atlantic Bronze Age and probably earlier. In 2003, Professor John Collis of the University of Sheffield wrote a book titled The Celts Origins, Myths and Invention, itself criticized in 2004 by Ruth and Vincent McGaw in Antiquity Celtic Nations. Six nations tend to be most associated with a modern Celtic identity, and are considered the Celtic nations. Brittany, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Isle of Man, Cornwall. It is these six nations that are considered Celtic by the Celtic League and the Celtic Congress amongst others. These organizations ascribe to a definition of Celticity based mainly upon language. In the aforementioned six regions, Celtic languages have survived and continue to be used to varying degrees in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Isle of Man, Cornwall and Brittany. There are also Celtic nomads, Irish travellers called Pavy, that speak a language called Shelter that is a creole of Irish Gaelic and other languages and indigenous Highland. Scottish travellers called Tinkers, who speak a language called Bulleri Gair that is an acrolect of Scottish Gaelic. A number of activists on behalf of other regions, nations have also sought recognition as modern Celts, reflecting the wide diffusion of ancient Celts across Europe. Of these, the most prominent are Galicia, N. P. 
Portugal, Asturias and Cantabria. A Celtic language did not survive in Galicia, northern Portugal, Asturias nor Cantabria, and as such they fall outside of the litmus test used by the Celtic League and the Celtic Congress. Nevertheless, Many organizations organized around Celticity consider that Galicia, northern Portugal and Asturias can claim a Celtic cultural or historic heritage. These claims to Celticity are rooted in the long historical existence of Celts in these regions and ethnic connections to other Atlantic Celtic peoples. In 2009, the Galaic Revival Movement, sponsored by the Liga Celtica Galaica, claimed to be reconstructing the Q-Celtic Galaic language based on the Atabivited Dictionary and Old Celtic Dictionary compiled by Vincent F. Pintado. Elements of Celtic music, dance, and folklore can be found within England, and the Cumbric language survived until the collapse of the Kingdom of Strathclyde in about 1018. England as a whole comprises many distinct regions, and some of these regions, such as Cumbria, Lancashire, and Western Yorkshire can claim more Celtic heritage than others. In 2009, it was claimed that revival of the Cumbric language was being attempted in the Cumberland area of England. However the idea that Cumbric was separate from Old Welsh has been criticised as stemming from the difficulty that many English historians have, with accepting Old Welsh as the language once spoken all over England. It was suggested by Colin Lewis in Khan magazine that revivalists in the north of England use modern Welsh to enable use of Welsh's existing rich cultural basis rather than having to reinvent the wheel in much the same way as has been done successfully in Derbyshire, another area where elements of Celtic culture survive. Similarly, in France outside of Brittany, in the Auvergne chants are sung around bonfires remembering a Celtic god. There are also modern attempts to revive the polytheistic religion of Gauls. Ancestry. Her profound interest in genealogy and family history is noted as a feature of the culture of the Celtic nations and regions and people with a Celtic heritage. People in traditional Celtic areas can recite their genealogy back though the generations is history. Moving rhythmically from one name to another using only Christian name as illustrated by lyrics of the Runrig song Si Ol Go Ride, the genealogy of Go Ride, the disease, hereditary hemochromatosis, has by far its highest prevalence rate among people of Celtic ancestry. Another trait far more prevalent among people of Celtic ancestry is red hair with 46% of Irish and at least 36% of Scots being carriers of red head. Variants of the MC1R gene possibly an adaptation to the cloudy weather of the areas where they live. Migration from Celtic countries a significant portion of the populations of the United States, Canada, Australia, Argentina and New Zealand is composed of people whose ancestors were from one of the Celtic nations. This concerns the Irish diaspora most significantly, but to a lesser extent also the Welsh diaspora and the Cornish diaspora. There are three areas outside Europe with communities of Celtic language speakers. The province of Chubut in Patagonia with Welsh-speaking Argentinians, Cape Breton Island in Nova Scotia with Scottish Gaelic-speaking Canadians, Southeast Newfoundland with Irish-speaking Canadians. The most common mother tongue amongst the Fathers of Confederation which saw the formation of Canada was Gaelic. There is a movement in Cape Breton for a separate province in Canada, as espoused by the Cape Breton Labour Party and others. In some former British colonies, or particular regions within them, the term Anglo-Celtic has emerged as a descriptor of an ethnic grouping. In particular, Anglo-Celtic Australian is a term comprising about 80% of the population. Music The claim that distinctly Celtic styles of music exist was made during the 19th century and was associated with the revival of folk traditions and pan-Celtic ideology. The Welsh anthem, Hen WLADF Wine Adore, was adopted as a pan-Celtic anthem. Though there are links between Scots Gaelic and Irish Gaelic folk musics, very different musical traditions existed in Wales and Brittany. 
Nevertheless, Gaelic styles were adopted as typically Celtic even by Breton revivalists such as Paul Ladmoreau. Celticism came to be associated with the bagpipe and the harp. The harp is considered to be the national instrument of Wales and is used to accompany Penillian singing where the harpist plays a melody and the singer sings in counterpoint to it. The roots revival, applied to Celtic music, has brought much into Celtic cross-fertilisation, as, for instance, the revival by Welsh musicians of the use of the medieval Welsh bagpipe under the influence of the Breton Binio, Irish Ulian pipes and famous Scottish pipes, or the Scots have revived the Bodron from Irish influence. Charles Ligoffis introduced the Scottish Highland pipes to Brittany. Unaccompanied or a cappella styles of singing are performed across the modern and Celtic world due to the folk music revival. Popularity of Celtic choirs, world music, scat singing and hip-hop rapping in Celtic languages. Traditional rhythmic styles used to accompany dancing and now performed a pure tabule from Scotland, Ireland, and Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. Sean knows song from Ireland and can hard discarn from Brittany. Other traditional unaccompanied styles sung currently are walking, song and psalm singing or lining out both from Scotland. The emergence of folk rock led to the creation of a popular music genre labelled Celtic music which frequently involves the blending of traditional and modern forms, e.g., the Celtic punk of the Pogues, the ambient music of Enya, the Celtic rock of Runrug, Rawlands Cross and Horselips, pan-Celtic music festivals were established. Notably the festival Interceltic DeLorean founded in 1971, which has occurred annually since.